My name is Trevor Lanting. I'm the Chief Development Officer at D-Wave, and I lead our product and research and development teams. And I'm excited to spend a few minutes giving you a deeper dive on some of the things that Alan led with this morning in his keynote, and really get into really the accelerated progress that we're able to make and that we're making on our, both our annealing and our gate model technology development programs. At the core, our mission at D-Wave is to harness quantum dynamics, quantum coherence to build computational tools to deliver customer value, and we're really excited to bring some exciting updates uh, and share those with you today. Carlton Coffrin, the speaker right before me, gave a really nice talk making the case for annealing quantum computing, have a, having a real long-term advantage in several areas, including optimization. And annealing quantum computing, in fact, was when we first started building technology 15 years ago, our initial key uh, development platform, our technology direction, was, was going deep and building an annealing architecture. And we did that for a few reasons. Annealing systems and architectures are more resilient to errors. The, the Kiba controls are constantly on throughout the annealing pro the process as we, in we initialize the Hamiltonian and evolve it toward a hard target Hamiltonian. And so annealing architectures are naturally more resilient to fluctuations and interactions with the environment. What we're finding is annealing Algorithms are not, do not require significant pre-processing or tuning involved. And in fact, my colleague, Kathy McGue, later on in Kibis will, will basically give you some benchmarking data and showing empirically in studies that it's remarkably, you get a remarkably stable performance of our range of parameters. And this is in stark contrast to variational algorithms like the quantum approximate optimization algorithm that's being used by gay model systems for solving optimization problems where there is substantial tuning required. And the proof is really in where we've been able to take this technology over the last uh, decade plus. And we're currently scaling to systems that are, have many thousands of qubits in the fabric of, of the processors. So this is a technology with annealing quantum computing that's commercial today and is a path to a very near-term large-scale quantum computing technology. And really, we're paying close attention to all of the research going on in the field. And sort of over the last 10 years, the research has really just reinforced our, our perspective that annealing architectures have a long-term advantage for optimization. So there's several papers that I'm going to call out here. Um, Alan talked a little bit this morning about optimization applications as quantum performance benchmarks. This is work coming out of this, this QEDC lobbying group, this third party group that did uh, a, a keep you to keep you comparison of a key optimization use case, MaxCut, and showed that both in scale, solution quality, and time to solution, there is a gap opening up between annealing quantum computing and the uh, emerging game model platforms. And finally, what about the day, Carlton you know, teed me up nicely for this, but what about the day when we have full uh, scaled error corrected game model systems? Well, even then, there's some work that came out a few years ago. This is by the, the quantum theory team with Google, suggesting that your underlying quantum algorithm needs to have at least a quadratic speed up or more over the classical approaches to solving a problem for it to make sense to run it on a game model system just because the amount of compute involved with running error correction will blunt the advantage of a quantum algorithm unless you have that scaling. There's many, many algorithms, and Alan spoke again this morning about some of those, including quantum chemistry, that do scale faster than this, where it does make sense to use an annealing system. But we see these two technology directions as very much complementary. Our core technology right now is our advantage annealing quantum computing system. So this is our fifth generation product. It's our flagship product. The annealing systems have more than 5,000 qubits, more than 35,000 couplers, and a highly connected topology. In the fabric of our processor, each qubit is connected to up to 15 other devices. All three of our advantage systems are currently available in our real time, uh, well, via real time access in our quantum cloud platform Leap. And we have access to advantage systems that are located near our research development facility in, in Vancouver, as well as systems in Germany and systems in California. My colleague Fiona Hannington will speak a little bit more about Leap and how we're really set up for production access and providing production access for customers that have hard optimization problems. Advantage is fully integrated with a growing suite of performant hybrid algorithms. Uh, the most recent of those, the, not, the, the nonlinear program solver, was announced this morning. And my colleague, Alex Candela, will, will actually do a, a demo right after this talk, um, going into detail around those hybrid solvers. But our hybrid stack and our portfolio really combine the best of classical resources and classical computing and quantum computing to really deliver value to our customers.
And finally, and I think, again, Carlton teed me up nicely, but we're seeing sort of a growing use case around the quantum simulation of materials, especially magnetic materials. And so our, our solver APIs offer a rich set of annealing controls, including forward annealing, fast annealing, and reverse annealing to really support investigation and in a growing class of, of quantum simulation use cases. So the success of our Advantage technology platform looking carefully at how users are, are engaging with the technology, looking carefully at the benchmarking data, has really informed the direction that we're taking our next generation solver. We've been hard at work on Advantage 2 for the last several years. Uh, starting in the second quarter of 2022, we made available in Leap a small scale prototype of the Advantage 2 architecture. Um, this architecture was made, or this, this sample was made in our, our canonical stack, fabrication stack that we use to create the, or build the Advantage processors. Um, we made this available in Leap, and it's gotten sort of a, a huge amount of act, a huge amount of interest from the community. Shortly thereafter, in the beginning of 2023, we started yielding small-scale, 400-scale qubit prototypes in a new fabrication stack. So, a key direction that we're taking the Advantage 2 technology is that we want to engineer our fab stack to produce lower noise devices that are more coherent. And this 400 qubit prototypes that started yielding in early 2023, we were able to benchmark and, and assess and verify that indeed we were getting better performing qubits. In the first quarter of this year, we made available in Leap a 1200 scale qubit prototype of the Advantage 2 architecture. Again, fabricated in our new, in our new stack and really we're able to verify in situ the coherence benefits and increase over the Advantage fabrication stack. Moreover, and I think Alan alluded to this to this, this morning, even at the 1200 qubit scale, in many ways, this processor is more performant than our Advantage processor, even at the 1200 qubit scale. And in fact, this is, this is the technology or the scale of the processor we used for our recent quantum supremacy demonstration. In the second quarter of this year, we were very excited to see the, the next stage in Advantage 2 start yielding. So 4,800 4, qubit samples yielded. We received them from our fabrication facility, and we currently have multiple samples that have cooled in, a, in our, our refrigerators in our lab and are, are under, currently under calibration. And we're really excited to see, to assess the performance of those at scale. Our eyes really are on the final delivery of Advantage 2. Upcoming, we really want to deliver a bigger scale technology, and we're really gunning toward a 7,000, greater than 7,000 qubit scale processor. So some key metrics, there's four pillars that we've taken the Advantage 2 architecture and technology and pushed it over the Advantage uh, technology. Alan spoke about some of these this morning. The first is coherence. You've heard a lot about coherent quantum annealing. You heard from my colleague Andrew King this morning around our quantum simulation and computational supremacy, sim, com, computational supremacy in simulation results. At the core, the more coherent we can make these processors, the faster we get uh, answers, the faster the time to solution is for hard optimization problems. Problems. Connectivity is also king. Going from our original Chimera topology to Pegasus, going from our 2000Q to Advantage, we saw massive gains in the performance and the complexity of problems that we can solve, going from six-way to 15-way connectivity. And we're taking this a step further with the Advantage 2 architecture and going to 20-way connectivity. This really enables larger, more complicated problems to be solved on the, on the QPU. And qubit count, scale matters. The bigger a problem you can solve, the more valuable it is for customers. We're currently, as I said, yielding and ass assessing and calibrating our 4,800 scale qubits with a, the plans to reach beyond 7,000 with the Advantage 2 program. And finally, energy scale. So this is basically represents the strength or the precision to which you can bind interactions between the qubits. The higher the energy scale, the higher the quality of the solutions you get. A couple of months ago, we released a protocol called Fast Anneal. So this protocol was released for general access on all of our QPU solvers on the 17th of April, so two months exactly to this day. This really allows users to specify annealing protocols on timescales that are short enough to render thermal excitation negligible. In a sense, the QPU is effectively able to outrun the thermal environment. And this is really is a core capability that we, we've had for the better part of two years internally that's really underpinned all of our work around coherent quantum simulation, and coherent quantum annealing, and really the, the, the computational supremacy result that, that we put onto the archive a couple of months ago. So we think this, this capability is extremely powerful and putting in the hands of users is really gonna give our users and our customers the capability of building applications that directly leverage the quantum supremacy, quantum supremacy regime. 
We think we're gonna see a class of increasingly sophisticated quantum simulations that users are able to build and do. And finally, fundamentally, quantum coherence is what we're harnessing as the, for the core computational power of giving us uh, access to the coherent regime and better solutions to optimization problems. And so we're really excited to see some of the rich benchmarking studies that we expect to come out from our users. Having our uh, Leap Cloud Platform is allowing us to roll out these changes um, to our customers and bring them to market very, very quickly. And we've been really validated by the, the immediate market response. So of the two Advantage 2 prototypes that we put into Leap over the last two years, we've seen to date in excess of 8.5 million customer jobs submitted to these two prototypes. This isn't even a full product launch. These are prototype architectures that the community is extremely excited to assess and start working with and start using. The Fast and New feature has been out exactly two months today, and we've seen, as of today, more than 1.5 million customer jobs submitted to our solvers using this feature. We really think this, this shows that kind of the hunger in the community for access to rapid changes in the technology, and really the power of a, a quantum cloud platform. We're able to basically shrink the gap between critical innovation on the research side and the time that we bring them to market. We're shrinking that and allowing progress to accelerate and really building out this technology to scale. This is a plot you might have seen earlier. Again, this is really showing the power of the coherent regime in delivering computational advantage in finding low energy solutions to a canonical problem class. So what I'm showing here um, are data from a paper that we published last, last year in Nature, showing in 3D spin glasses how we can reduce the residual, residual energy per spin as we adjust the anneal time, and comparing this, this result, the, the behavior of the annealing quantum processors, against some standard classical heuristics, standard classical ways of solving the problem. So there's a couple of things to note. The first in the blue, what we noticed with the, the straight lines, especially the blue line, the blue line is the, the expectation from coherent theory. So that's how fast we expect to reduce the residual energy, this gap to optimal solution, as a function of anneal time. And you can see that there's a very good match between the blue and then the blue actual data, the blue line and the blue data points that are in the plot. We're also showing data from some classical heuristics, simulated annealing and simulated quantum annealing. And again, there's very good agreement between the theoretical scaling and what we're actually getting empirically. But the thing to note is that we're able to burn down residual energy closer to optimum faster as we scale out the, the anneal time. We're seeing a scaling advantage over classical approaches and getting good solutions to hard optimization problems. Alan teased this this morning, and I just want to follow up by something that we're extremely excited about. Um, so this is, these are data that are literally hot off the presses over the last few weeks. The, basically, working on the Fastenio protocol and getting the Fastenio protocol available has really inspired us and opened up uh, an entirely new set of controls for a QPU that have really kind of led the way to our, our and guided our thinking around next generation QPU controls that we could eventually put in the hands of users. Enhancements that we've done in our R&D laboratory to the FastNeal protocol have allowed in situ preparation of excited states. So like Alan spoke about this morning, we can use a set of Ancilla devices that are, that are adjacent to the processor qubits to target excitations into the qubits as they're actually performing the quantum annealing algorithm. We can also use Encella Cubis to read out in a basis that is orthogonal to our original basis. And this allows us to really directly in situ probe quantum dynamics of a set of Cubis in the fabric of a scale quantum annealing processor and really start doing some exciting experiments, including a recent experiment that we concluded that showed an, a violation of Bell's inequality in the fabric of the processor. And just to form a few more details around this, what we took, essentially what we're showing is data that show a two qubit system with a coupling between the two qubits that starts out in the ground state. We use an ancilla qubit to give a hard kick to one of the two qubits, and that puts it into its first excited state. What you can see in the blue on the top and the bottom are measurements in the canonical spin basis. So what you can see is that that kick that we give to the first qubit starts at precessing between up and down very rapidly but you actually see an envelope. You see basically a beating pattern where you can see the population of the excitation is traveling from the first qubit to the second, coherently swapping back and forth. Another new innovation, though, is our ability to directly measure in the energy basis. So what you're seeing in the orange is measurements that show you in a orthogonal basis that the first qubit entering an excited state 
and then moving into the ground state and passing that excitation to qubit, the second qubit, and then back and forth. And so these are some initial preliminary controls that we're developing that really have us excited. Um, and these controls, we think longer term, will get, really let users perform expanded and richer sets of quantum simulations of magnetic materials and really just open up a, a, a much richer set of use cases in the future. Finally, I want to say a few words about our, our gate model program. So we're accelerating progress on our gate model program as well. What we've really found is that all of, as we've launched this, this, this program, all of the quantum systems technology that we've developed for our annealing systems, a large part of this technology is allowing us or immediately is applicable to our gate model systems. So things like our, our multi-layer fabrication stack, our cryogenic enclosures, our filtering, our room temperature electronics, our calibration stack, all of this is setting us up very well for our gate model architecture and the gate model development. We've been able to demonstrate our build Fluxonium devices that have very close to state-of-the-art properties, so coherence times that will support uh, scalable uh, gate model architecture. Um, like Alan spoke about this morning, we've also demonstrated a very fast scalable readout for Fluxonium, and we have a design and layout of a logical qubit prototype. So really what the team is focusing on next is demonstrating local integrated control. This is key to a scalability of a, the scalability of a game model architecture. So we're hard at work making sure that we can integrate that, that, that local scalable control with Fluxonium and really then focus on fabricating and calibrating this logical qubit demonstrating an end-to-end -end control of this logical qubit. And then finally, we've identified new materials in the fabrication stack, and we're integrating a lower loss dielectric that's really gonna support a, a performant logical qubit operation. So I kind of want to end with just a perspective on technology development at D-Wave. What we've noticed is as we develop new technology, put it in the hands of our customers via our Leap Quantum Cloud platform, that really enables use cases, exploration of use cases, and acceleration of use cases for this technology that in turn guys are thinking about the next generation of our hardware. And this for us is a really virtuous cycle. We're very, very keen to watch how the customer, all of our customers and users are using our technology, and this really directly guides our product roadmap going into the future. Uh, that tight coupling between use case development and technological innovation uh, is really has me excited over the next few years uh, for the, the, the future of this technology. So I'm gonna end with a call to action. So all of this technology that I've talked about today, our kneeling, our, our advantage to prototypes, our fast kneel protocol, they're all available via the cloud, the, the Leap Quantum Cloud Service. So sign up today and we're excited to see what you can do with our technology. Thank you.